No, it's not. The fact that it's procedural immediately completely makes the game loop feel different. This is, this, I mean, there's, ex there's exploration in this game, but this game is much more looting focused, where Terraria, I'd say, is more progression slash exploration focused. Yeah, just the fact that the levels in this are procedural make it feel completely different than Subnautica. And not necessarily in a bad way, it's just it's just different. Did I say Terraria? It, it, dude, it, I meant Subnautica. It's somebody said Terraria in chat. Which then made my bleached brain immediately think Terraria. Yeah. My dip is a little crazy, that's fine. Also, I'm actually playing Terraria with my son. I'm I'm playing like probably an hour or so of Terraria a day with Rowan has been a lot of fun. It, I really want to do a big run of that game again. What is the next survival game you're planning on playing in the future? Uh, well, we're going to be starting Sons of the Forest again. We're going to do another run of Sons of the Forest and see how the 1.0 is. So we're going to be doing that. And then... Um, I don't know what the, the next big game is after that. Is that one of those blister things? I really need to find one of these blister things. Oh, that's a giant orb. Well named. These are more of those egg things, aren't they? I don't know if we need more of these, but let's go ahead and grab them. Actually, I think we do need more. I don't remember for what, but I'm pretty sure when we were flipping through our build stuff, these popped up. Okay. Can I also just say how much I love that the devs made it so like rare resources are lit up? So in a situation like this, you can actually see the lights in the distance. Funny enough, it makes this uh, weird negative we have of no light almost a little better. It makes it so we can more easily see the resources. Which is kind of fun. I think you need marsh eggs for personal upgrades. Cool. Great. Yeah, we're really going to look into those when we get back. I need to get the bigger personal inventory as soon as possible. Foe show oh man it's very dork it is so dork outside i like shiny things i dude i love shiny things didn't me i love shiny things i am stuck on like a i'm in a i'm stuck in a bush that's what's going on right now i'm stuck in a bush All right, so we're going to go up here. We're going to try to get this energy. And then we're going to... Okay, this has been a really long zone. Whoa. What be this? Was for a power thing. Cool. Fun, gotta love the trait that pops the hood when you go in reverse. This is the second time I've gotten that trait. Which is even more funny. I got the trait, erased it, and then like what? Ten minutes later I had it again. real quick. Great. Great.
Dawn Trail is coming up. Are you going to do any prep streams beforehand to get through the patch content? Uh, yeah, I'd like to. What, what, Dawn Trail is... June? May? When, when is, when is Dawn Trail, chat? Oh, that's... I can replicate Alan's suppression method. We'll stand some chance of halting the gamma ray burst on the well. Thirty years later, my late husband still manages to impress. They're figuring out how to keep you alive once the reaction gets going, however. That's harder. But I have an idea. Francis, I need your ear. Go on. We know that as soon as the car gets to the well, the trigger will be instant. Once this remnant expends its energy, gamma radiation will erupt from the well, and the driver will be at ground zero, taking the worst of it. But can we activate the gateway as soon as they make contact? It's really? tricky. Too early, and we may interrupt whatever reaction process the remnant carries out. Too late, and it's bad news for the driver. There's too many unknowns. Only the driver will know the right time to use it. How can you be sure they'll live long enough to make that call? The ARC device has been transmitting data every single second since it was installed. Every drop of fuel, every spark plug that car's lit, I have on record. You've been running an experiment this entire time, with the driver as the guinea pig. The mere act of being alive is the biggest experiment of all, dear. Is that another one of Alan's sayings? That one's all mine. Driver, we've seen that car protect you this entire time. It's triggered a gateway in your time of need. It's ferried you back to the garage through every circumstance and obstacle and bump in the road. So we can trust that it'll protect you long enough to get you away from whatever and wherever you end up. Still sounds like a heavy dose of blind faith to me. Could be. Oh, there's one last part to this, and it's waiting for you back at the auto shop. Take your time. Enjoy the view. Hmm, okay. Do it, don't 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 do it. No, I think if the red lights... I love that this pickpocket is so considerate that when it steals something from you, an alarm goes off showing you where it is. Wait, did he... Oh, yep, there it is. That is like the most considerate pickpocket that has ever picked. Amazing. Okay. Oh my God, this is so annoying. <laughs> this is actually just annoying. Okay, let's go get this part now. Cool, okay, great. Here. New, dude, this would have been impossible without the item highlighting on. <laughs> this game like a nine of 10 for you? Ah, no. It's really cool and it's really fun. Um. I, I don't know if I'd go as high as like a 9 of I don't really do out of 10s anyway, but I wouldn't really go that far even if I did. Uh, the main gameplay loop is, is still a little repetitive for me. Um, and there's definitely been times where it's been very frustrating as well. But that being said, I mean, it, it's it's got a lot of really cool parts to it. It's, it's, a, it's overall, it's very fun. I definitely recommend checking it out for pretty much everyone, I'd say, that likes this kind of stuff, yeah. Well, you know, I'm not gonna. I don't. I don't like overselling things. I would. I would. It. It's still got some issues and stuff for sure. I feel it's almost empty. I have two different tanks that we can fill. So we've got this guy fill here. And we've also got the fuel in the back of the. Uh, of our People are are already modding Dragon's Dogma too. That's awesome. Uh, Madrika, you activate that when the enemy has already latched onto you, so I don't think the pickpocket is actually latching onto us. 
What just happened? Can you fight back? Uh, I mean, there's tools you can use to protect yourself, but there's not really a lot of, like, fighting back in the game. You can, you can like, uh, grind up some things. Oh, do I really only have one ceiling tank? Oh, no. You're a mechanic kid. Okay. On a scale of grilled cheese to unicorn farts, how would you rate this game? Uh, a flamboyant grasshopper on that scale. No, no, no. I don't know what that purple thing is, but we probably should get out of here before this storm destroys us. Okay, so we're going to dip into the storm, but only for a second. out of this. You can see the damage to my car right now. Okay. There we go. So we're out of the storm, and we're on a straightaway to where we need to go. So I hope slash think we're, oh, we're almost on a straightaway, actually. Nomus31. Thank you, bud. Want to try to get these two things? <laughs> That's weird. My car is going so so turn the car on. Oh. I say at this point we should probably get. Let's get. Mm -hmm. We're getting out of here. Okay, so all we have to do at this point is I think we just have to take an exit. I, I've never done that in the end zone, though, outside of the story mission, so I don't know how it's going to be, but we just need to basically, basically do this. One second.
battery sapping. Oh, good. That's, that's super good. Okay. Um. How long is Ko gonna be a Super Saiyan for? I thought it was just for a day. Oh no, I'm I'm riding this out, dude. I'm growing my hair out, so apparently I'm gonna have frosted tips. Mm -hmm. Ooh, corruption. Oh, that's a treat. Ugh. Oh, hey, uh, Somersault, do you have a link to the announcement on that? I want to see the uh, official announcement. Okay, we need one more. Uh, looking at, well, we might be able to go this way. Did he say frosted tit? No, tips. T I P S. T I P P. That other thing is a completely different thing. Not for this channel. But other channels on Twitter. Oh God, what is this? A blacksmith? It like sent up a bunch of spikes all over the place? Okay, we should probably not be anywhere near those in the future ever. That would, if we were close to that when it fired off and it hit our car, I can only imagine how much damage it would have Which would have been kitten stropping. What's a small tower? Need to scan a blacksmith anomaly for some tech upgrades? Already scanned it. Okay, we scanned it. We are the good. Ooh, that goes so much faster than the other one. New hammer upgrade is boss. Scrap metal. Oh, how convenient. Lose our crowbar, immediately get one back. We'll take it. Oh, thank you, Somersault. Hold on real quick, guys. I, I kind of want to see this. This is something I heard uh, musings about, but I think it is now officially out there. Uh, thank you, Somersault, for uh, bringing that to our attention. Star Wars Jedi director Stig Amison has formed a new studio working on AAA single-player focused action adventure. 
a new AAA game studio dedicated to building gameplay-driven, story-immersed action-adventure games set in captivating worlds. They made... They left the Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor Studio Respawn last year to make this studio. Oh, wow. Joining the Jedi director at the studio is CTO John Carr, who previously worked as the technical director on Survivor. <laughs> so it sounds like they had some lunches and were like, you know what? Let's go make our own studio. This whole respawn thing? Nah, let's go do it ourselves. <laughs> oh, man. Um, up, oh, also joining design director who worked on Star Wars Jedi Survivor and Fallen Order. My lord! <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> it just like took a lot of the, t or I guess some of the team just left. Yeah. But I mean, hell, I loved, uh, I loved Star Wars Jedi and Survivor. So, I mean, but, you know, hey, I'm here for it. Giant Skull. We'll be following that. We will definitely be following that. That's a stacked team. That is a pretty stacked team. Honestly, these days, um, my biggest concern is not the quality of the team. My biggest concern is anytime I see those three letters together and it's not behind uh, an already established studio, funding becomes a huge issue. It, it doesn't really matter how good your team is, but when you start putting a lot of very talented, very experienced people together, that means that that project is gonna be very, very expensive. And what three letters am I talking about? Triple A. When you, see, when you see studios forming to make AAA games and they're not established right now, game funding is down massively from a few years ago. It's down massively from last year. And AAA games require, in almost all cases, multiple rounds of millions of dollars to, to be formed. And those companies are gonna be looking for those money or that, that amount of money, not only this year, but then again, possibly next year, again the year after that. Like games like this very rarely are what you have when, when you when you make a game, you have something or any really any project, you have something called a runway. And a runway is how much time you have paid for. So if I if I paid myself a hundred dollars a month and the project was gonna take five months and I had five hundred dollars, that's a fully paved runway. I have enough money the time I need to develop my product. Almost none of these projects start with fully paved runways. Almost none of them. They generally start with like, okay, this project will take us three to five years and we're doing a raise for $14 million to give us a runway of a year. And then the point is they use that money over the year to make a more attractive project to then go for another round of funding or probably the same or more money. And the problem is that these days, <laughs> these days, um, that money is getting thinner and thinner. So it's it's the kind of thing where, sure, you may get the money now, you may open your big studio, but in a year and a half, you may not be able to get the funding to continue your project. And we have seen a lot of those studios and those large projects get shuttered recently. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and repair now because they can't make their, their rounds of funding. So it's uh it sucks, man. But whenever I see those those announcements for the AAA studios, I'm like, that's awesome. I hope you succeed. <laughs> I hope you succeed. Especially these days. I hope you succeed. But it also, funny enough, it's weird because whenever I do see announcements for like big AAA studios with tons and tons of like really experienced dry. people. I mean, it's, I, I certainly don't have the same feeling looking at it now that I would have like five years ago. Yeah, yeah middle-aged David, funny enough, you just kind of said what I'm like, that's a part of it, unfortunately. That's a part of it. Like, I don't care about your studio announcement. Let me know when your game's ready. <laughs> Let me know when your game's ready. Shazam says, it sounds like bad decision-making. It's not necessarily... It, it can be bad decision-making, but I would say a lot of it is also the reality of the current investing environment. 
It's it's it just really the reality of the economy as a whole these days. Um, it's it's not necessary like the way these companies do it with the stage raises. It's kind of how it's done. So you know, in, in, at that at, I should say how it's done at that level. At that level, that's how it's done. So it's you know you can't like, and and it's worked obviously countless times, which is why companies keep doing it. Um, and I'm not again I'm not just talking about game devs here. At, Tons and tons of startups function in a similar fashion. So, um, you know, it's, 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 yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how it all pans out.